Hey there, Father Michael here. I have been to France many times. And one of the things that I really enjoy going to see when I go, which depending on my itinerary, I can't always do it. Um, but one of my favorite places to go is to the cathedral at Chartres, um, which is probably maybe 50 miles uh, outside the city of Paris. It's a beautiful cathedral, a magnificent Gothic specimen. Um, it's one of the world heritage sites designated by uh, UNESCO. It is the Cathedral of Our Lady of Chartres, built over a period of, I don't know, 20 some years maybe, um, and finished in the year 1220. That's interesting enough, but it also happens to stand, you know, on some pretty sacred ground going back at least 2,000 years when the Romans uh, came into that part of Europe um, and conquered the Druids. On that same site where the current uh, Cathedral of Chartres stands, there were also five other cathedrals on that very same site going all the way back to the fourth century CE. So, it's an ancient, sacred, mystical kind of place. And the architecture is Gothic, like I said, but there are all sorts of cool little uh, pre-Christian symbols and creatures tucked away in little corners. And it's just, it's endlessly fascinating. I highly recommend going there. It has an underground tunnel uh, that served as the uh, original place of worship while the cathedral itself was being built. It's still used uh, sometimes for uh, mass and other prayer services, and it's, it's like so deep in the earth, it's freezing cold, even in the middle of summer when I've been there. Uh, it has uh, an ancient well deep well. Uh, and there's lots of historical documentation uh, establishing the fact that that well was used as a place of executing people, dropping them down the well. Uh, it's called the Well of the Brave Saints. Um, people were thrown to their deaths because of their conversion to Christianity, including a saint with the curious name of Modesta, uh, her statue is, is off in the corner, uh, not too far from the well. Another cool thing is that there is uh, an ancient piece of clothing there, a relic, called the Santa Camisa, which is allegedly uh, the very garment that the Virgin Mary wore while giving birth to the baby Jesus. Because that could be true. Anyway, it's been there for a long time, and it's it's cool to see. It also, the church itself, also has an amazing, amazing array of beautiful stained glass windows, which are probably the best example of that medieval period, probably in all of Europe, not just in France. The main attraction, though, for that church is the labyrinth. And you can Google that to see what that looks like. It's pretty darn cool. A labyrinth is like a maze. And this particular one is made of stone, of course, and it is designed uh, into the floor in the nave of the church. The nave is the place where the people gather. Uh, it's, I want to say it's like maybe 50 or 60 feet in diameter. 
Um, you really never see the whole thing, except maybe for special occasions. Uh, when I've been there in the summertime, um, it's only, uh, it's usually covered by chairs. You know, it's uh, an operating church. But uh, on Friday afternoon and evening, it's, it's partially uncovered so that people can walk uh, part of that labyrinth. That practice of walking a labyrinth goes back many centuries as a spiritual practice. And I remember reading somewhere um, that some historians think it began as a way uh, of allowing the common person without financial resources uh, to go to Jerusalem and actually make a pilgrimage to visit the Holy Land it allowed ordinary people to do a little spiritual pilgrimage of their own. There's another one, a, a replica of, of the original uh, outside behind the church in what's called the Bishop's Garden. So you can always walk the full thing uh, outside if the weather's nice. Walking the labyrinth is a spiritual experience. I've done it not only at Chartres, but I've I've done it elsewhere. Um, I've done retreats at church where um, I had access to someone's portable one, which was printed on heavy gauge vinyl, uh, and we were able to place on the floor to allow people that experience. It seems kind of weird, but there's something about walking a labyrinth that is very calming and centering, whether it's in an ancient historical church like Chartres in France, or whether it's, you know, uh, at the one just an hour and a half west of where I live now. So I remember taking my shoes off, it works better barefoot or stocking foot. And there's something about feeling those smooth stones or the grass beneath your feet as you go into the maze of the labyrinth and at first it feels like it's like a trick because you don't really seem to be going anywhere and then pretty soon the path takes you all the way almost to the very center which is the goal, right? You move from the outside to the inside. You move really quickly, very close to the center. And so you think, oh, well, this isn't going to take any time at all. But then all of a sudden it takes a series of pretty sharp turns and 90 degrees, 180 degrees. And, and you're going back, you know, back and forth in these, in these loops and you find yourself being taken farther and farther away from the center, kind of lost in the tangle of turns. When I first did the one at Chartres, I, I wondered, you know, hmm, am I ever going to really get to, to the center here? But the secret of walking the labyrinth effectively is just to turn off your brain slow down and breathe and find your own stride, find your rhythm and to do it in a prayerful, meditative kind of way. And as you do eventually kind of find your rhythm, that's when something amazing happens and you find yourself suddenly and inexplicably much more calm, much more focused on what's going on in your body. And your spirit feels just so much more settled and open to the voice of God within. And as you're coming to that realization, all of a sudden, there you are. You are at the center of the labyrinth and there's always a larger space there uh, a circle in the middle, sometimes a square, 
where you can just pause for a moment, sit down perhaps on the stones and reflect and just be still. At the Cathedral of Chartres, it's even more interesting at the end point because at the very center of that labyrinth is a minotaur design, definitely a pre-Christian symbol. So it's obviously a reference to the antiquity of the place and the many spiritual traditions upon which that cathedral stands. Here's the thing. Walking a labyrinth is not walking in search of finding God. That's not what its purpose is. It's a journeying with God in the present moment. And that is true for every kind of pilgrimage, including the pilgrimage of walking through this life. Whenever I walk a labyrinth, and like I said, there's a really nice outdoor one just an hour and a half west of me, just outside of Plymouth. Whenever I do that, slowly putting one foot in front of the other, it gets really easy to imagine God patiently walking alongside me, inviting me to just keep moving forward in a trusting, joyful, peaceful manner, even when I don't know how and when this journey will end. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, even when we are confused, frustrated, depressed, feeling lost in the labyrinth of this life, we have that assurance that everything is well in hand, that Jesus is our way forward. So to say that, you know, living this life is like walking a labyrinth, well, that's kind of an obvious thing to say. But none of us knows exactly where this path is leading us. We certainly have no idea of the obstacles and the challenges uh, that we're going to face, sometimes lying directly ahead of us, ready to knock us off our game. But like every man-made labyrinth, which was carefully laid out according to a specific idea and plan that is not at all obvious, so too is our life. God has everything in hand. God knows how this is all going to end. And so being aware of that allows us, I think, to trust a little more deeply so that we can continue walking through this life, holding on to our faith, knowing at all times that God has our back and that Christ is the way forward. Let's pray. Loving Mother, Father, God, creator of our life, sustainer of our days, we open our hearts to your divine healing presence in this moment, grateful, first of all, for the miracle of life. Thank you for being with us, for showing us Jesus, our brother, as our way forward, for helping us to keep moving even when we simply wanted to stop. Most of all, we thank you, loving God, for those people in our life who help us find a little bit of hope, a little light when we feel like we are in darkness. 
Help us to be that person today for someone else who is struggling. And as always, help us to trust that as we walk the labyrinth of this life, you are with us at every moment. So we have nothing to fear. Amen. And now may the God of peace, the God of Holy Week, who guides us from life into death and into newness of life, may that God be with you and all those you love today. Otsa isinu isfiatomaduhu. Dopobachinya.